Hello everyone, my name is Luke and I'm a PhD student investigating African horse sickness virus pathogenesis and today I'm going to talk to you about um, a study comparing pathogenicity between different AHSV strains in an if not knockout mouse model. So what is African horse sickness virus? Uh, it's an orbivirus closely related to blue tongue. Uh, it has a double-stranded RNA genome split into 10 segments. Uh, and it's highly lethal in horses, up to 100% mortality. Uh, donkeys and mules are less affected, and it exists as a low-level viremia in zebra. Uh, it's an OIE notifiable disease, spread predominantly but not exclusively by Culicoides imicola. Uh, and in the horse, there are four different forms of disease, uh, the fever form, the cardiac form, pulmonary form, and mixed form. Um, and again, in the horse, the spleen, the lungs, and hearts are believed to be the target organs. And there's also an evidence of a tropism for endothelial cells and monocyte macrophages. So the problem with horses and doing experiments in them is that they're quite big and they like to run around a lot. So what AHS researchers have done is try and use a small, a small animal model instead. Uh, and the go-to one at the minute is IFNAR minus minus um, mice, which are a genetically engineered lab strain and they lack a type 1 interferon receptor, which leaves them vulnerable to viral infection. Uh, if not knockout mice have been used as small animal model for various different virus pathogens, including Ebola, Zika and Blue Tongue. Uh, they've also been used for African horse sickness virus, and in that context, uh, mainly to test vaccine efficacy, particularly NVA VP2 vaccines. Uh, and in this mouse model, it's been shown that HS infection causes clinical signs, uh, lethality, viremia, and histological lesions. So here's a picture of a spleen from an ifnar knockout mouse and a white lesion caused by the virus. So uh, the experiment I'm going to talk to you today uh, is an animal experiment that was done in 2012. Um, so I didn't collect all the data from it, but I did all the downstream analysis, uh, which is mainly what I'm going to discuss. But for context, um, there were uh, five mice per group, and each group was infected with a different strain of AHS. And we were looking for differences uh, in pathogenicity between the different strains. So there was an AHSV6 strain, uh, an AHSV9 strain, uh, two different serotype 2 strains, group C and group G, uh, and then three different AHSV3 AHSV <coughs> strains. Uh, and they were reassortants, so they were made in the lab uh, from a superinfection between a HSV3 vaccine strain and an HSV8 wild type strain, and they have different segments from each parent. Uh, so the clinical data, just to contextualise the experiment for everyone, um, HSV3 V1 was the most pathogenic strain. Uh, it had the shortest, the hosts infected with it had the shortest survival time of only four days. Uh, the other HSV3 reassortants were also quite pathogenic, um, so a survival time of 6 and 6.6 .6 days. Uh, HSV6 was also pathogenic, um, but the HSV9 and HSV2 um, strains, so the VVV09 Senegal strain and the uh, Senegal 2007 strain, uh, they were less pathogenic. Uh, those mice survived to the end of the experiment. And if you look at the blood titers here, um, HSV3 clearly had the highest titer over the course of infection until all the mice died. Uh, HSV6, um, somewhere in the middle. And then HSV9, one of the lowest mortalities that also had the lowest viremias, the red line across the bottom. So, histopathology. Uh, from these mice, uh, various organs were dissected um, and then stained with hematoxin eosin. Uh, so these are spleens from the different groups. Just representative examples. In HSV, so this is what a normal uninfected spleen looks like. Um, so this is white pulp in purple, made up of white blood cells, and red pulp in this pinkish colour, are made up of red blood cells. And you can see in HSV3 V1 infection, uh, it's almost totally destroyed. There's big swathes of necrosis, uh, apoptosis, and fibrin deposits. Uh, but other strains show different effects. In HSV6, you see a mega karyocyte infection. These are large white blood cells. And in AHSV3 V368, um, there's not a necrosis as such, but there is a homogenization of the red and white pulp and the breakdown of the ordered structure. Uh, the liver was more consistent. All the strains showed some sort of um, inflammation, uh, inflammatory infiltrates. But AHSV3 V1 also showed um, hepatic necrosis and large hemorrhages within the tissue. 
Uh, heart, again, also pretty consistent between the different groups. They all showed myocard myocarditis, which is an inflammation of the heart muscle to a, a significant extent. And they also showed hemorrhaging. Uh, lung was particularly interesting. So most of the strains um, showed edema, which is fluid within the lungs, uh, and that was most and interstitial pneumonia, and that was most severe in HSV3 V1 infection. Uh, and all the strains were also associated with inflammation to some extent. Uh, so you can see here these purple bluish cells, uh, part of an inflammation in a V368 infection. Uh, and the lungs of HSV9 and the HSV2 strains uh, appeared the healthiest. Uh, so this is just a table summarising what I've told you. Um, the, you can see in red the HSV3 V1 strain uh, has the most severe histopathological lesions, but there are um, severe lesions dotted around the other groups as well. Uh, so next I did some <laughs> immunofluorescence work in uh, tissues that have been preserved in OCT at minus 80, and I labelled them with an anti-VP7 antibody. So VP7 uh, is normally part of the middle of the capsid, but it also forms these large hexagonal crystals in the cell during replication. No one quite knows why, uh, but they're a good target to label because they're big and they show up well. Uh, so I labelled those, DAPI nucleus and a uh, cytoskeletal label in red. And we were looking for insight, I was looking for insights into viral tropism and seeing if there's a difference between all these strains. Um, so, this is going to be tricky with the size of the images in this PowerPoint, but um, in AHSV3 V1, there was uh, a great level of VP7 staining, um, a few bits of green here, 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 and then in the top right of each image, where I can, I've included uh, a zoomed in image of one of the hexagonal crystals. Um, there was, yeah. The spleens in general were quite heavily stained, uh, but there was very little staining in the HSV2 infected spleen and the HSV9 strain infected spleen. Uh, the livers were more consistent apart from HSV3 V1, which again had the highest levels of VP7 staining. Uh, so some down here, some here. Um, but yeah, uh, I've also included those inserts. There was some staining in all the different livers. Uh, the heart was an unusual case. So 3V1, which I've been saying to now is the most pathogenic, uh, we didn't see, I didn't see any VP7 staining or to any great extent, um, but there, were, there was in the HSV2 strain, which I've been arguing is less pathogenic, so you can see some there on sort of like the edge of the heart tissue, uh, and again in HSV6 and in HSV3 V7-8. Uh, kidney, um, again, there was low levels of VP7, VP7 staining across all of the strains, pretty much. And these are some negative control images, uh, just to prove that those green flecks don't show up without the virus. Uh, so this is a graphical summary of what I've just shown you. So I captured images from each tissue infected by each strain, and then calculated the level of staining using image J to identify the areas of positive staining. I'm working all that out. Uh, so you can see that the spleen is generally the most infected organ in the different groups, uh, and HSV3 V1 has the highest levels of staining, both in its spleen and its liver. Uh, V378 uh, is also quite high. Um, this is not an ideal way to present this data, so quantifying things with confocal microscopy is quite difficult. You can't have the laser at a consistent power, so there's an argument uh, that it could be inconsistent in that aspect. Um, but I thought it better to have some semi-quantifiable data with caveats than no quantifiable data. So what can we conclude? Uh, in this if none knockout MOS model, uh, we can see that these different strains have different biological properties, uh, and therefore you can investigate the effects the different genes these the different genes within these viruses have on tissue tropism uh, and dissemination and how the host uh, inflammatory response works. In this model, we see that HSV3 V1 is the most pathogenic strain. It has the highest mortality rate, the most severe pathology, and the high levels of VP7 staining. Uh, the other HSV3 reassortants are also highly pathogenic. Um, but HSV9, uh, that strain Senegal VVV09, and HSV2 were relatively low pathogenicity. Uh, they had low mortality, low viremia, uh, reduced pathology, and reduced antigen staining. And HSV6 strain is somewhere in the middle. So to take this further, uh, I'm going to do some sequencing to elucidate what these genetic differences are between the different strains and try and ascribe some of these differences to specific gene segments and specific genetic differences. 
Uh, I'd like to thank my supervisors, particularly Javier Castillo Alvarez for providing the tissues, Javier Salguero for teaching me about um, histopathology, and Pippa and Jenny for teaching me about confocal microscopy.